the 88th plenary meeting of the General Assembly is called to order. I shall now invite the, the attention of the General Assembly to paragraph 21 of Resolution 70-140 of 17th of December 2015, calling for a, a special meeting in commemoration of the International Day of the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. The Assembly will recall that it's at its 80th plenary meeting on the 17th of December last year, it concluded its consideration on agenda item 70. It will be necessary to reopen its consideration in order to hold the special meeting. May I take it that it is the wish of the General Assembly to reopen consideration on agenda item 70. It's so decided. The General Assembly will now resume its consideration on agenda item 70, elimination of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. In order to commemorate the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination and to hold a debate on the state, state of racial discrimination worldwide. Mr. Secretary General, Excellences, High Commissioner Said, Mr. Ahmed Reid, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, you are all very welcome to this commemorative event. Uh, in 1966, the General Assembly decided that the 21st of March would be the day when the world pauses each year to reflect on the state of racial discrimination in our world. They did so because it was on this day in 1960 that 69 unarmed and peaceful protesters uh, were killed by the apartheid regime police in Sharpeville, South Africa. We are this year reflecting in particular on the progress made during the 15 years since the Durban Declaration and Program of Action was adopted. And it's fair to say that the picture is very mixed. On the whole, we have made progress, including by eliminating much of the direct discrimination on the basis of race, color, and, or ethnicity. But it's also true that the ignorance, ignorance prejudice, and fear that is often the root of racial discrimination continues to run deep right across the world. Millions of people continue to be victims of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance, which have assumed contemporary forms and manifestations. Disturbingly, in the past 12 months, we have also seen a rise of divisive political rhetoric and xenophobia in, in some parts of the world, particularly targeting refugees and migrants. Democratic societies will, of course, always face tensions in terms of managing the interests of different groups, but tolerance, cultural diversity, responsible political leadership, and inclusive governance are absolutely fundamental to protecting human rights and to ensuring that those tensions do not spill over into violence and conflict. And while individuals, civil society, the UN and others all have important roles to play in countering racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance, ultimately each and every member state bears primary responsibility for their prevention and elimination. In particular, we must do more to live up to the commitments under the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination and under the Durban Declaration and Program of Action. This requires targeted and immediate actions 
but it must be sustained over time. Indeed, from South Africa to the United States of America, it's clear that hard-fought victories against oppressive systems are not yet enough to overcome the legal legacy of discrimination. Eradicating institutional bias and changing both attitudes and outcomes is hard. It takes time and it takes strong commitment. Indeed, the International Decade for People of African Descent 2015 to 2024 reminds us of the need to be vigilant and to stay the course on these issues. It seeks to, to address many of the lingering legalities, uh, legacies uh, on one of the greatest forms of racism and racial discrimination the world has ever seen. And I'm very pleased that we are joined today by keynote uh, speaker, Mr. Ahmed Reid, member of the working group of experts on people on African descent of the Human Rights Council. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, let us remember all those who suffered from racism over years. And let us honor them by working together and taking concrete action to prevent further cases of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. I thank you. And I now invite the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Ban Ki-moon, to make a statement. Thank you, um, Mr. President. Uh, Excellencies, High Commissioner for Human Rights, uh, Mr. Ahmed uh, Reid, member of the UN Working Group of Experts on People of African Descent, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to join you to mark the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Let us recall that the date of this annual observance is the anniversary of the Sharpeville massacre of peaceful demonstrators in South Africa in 1960. I draw encouragement by how far we have come since that tragedy. But we have much distance still to travel in our work for equality for all. For this year's observance, we are commemorating the 15th anniversary of the Durban Declaration and the Program of Action. Adopted by consensus at the World Conference Against Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia, and Related Intolerance, these texts remain the most comprehensive framework for international, regional, and national actions against racism. The international community acknowledged in Durban that no country could claim to be free of racism. This remains the case today. We have undoubtedly come a long way in ensuring equal rights and non-discrimination. Member states have adopted or amended legislation to guard against racial discrimination. An international decade for people of African descent was proclaimed by the General Assembly and will continue through the year 2024. Civil society organizations worldwide working on racism are increasingly active and vocal. Yet the persistence of racism indicates that we have not yet done enough. I am deeply alarmed by a surge of intolerance, racist views, and hate-driven violence around the world. Racial profiling and violence against certain communities is on the rise. Economic hardship and political opportunism are triggering increased hostility towards minorities. This is being manifested most directly in anti-refugee, anti anti-migrant, and in particular, anti-Muslim bigotry, attacks, and violence. Extreme right-wing political parties are fomenting divisiveness 
and dangerous myth. Even once centrist parties have hardened their views, once moderate countries are seeing xenophobia rise sharply, and once sober voices have exploited fears in a dangerous echo of the darkest chapters of the last century. All of this increase, increases the risk of societal fracture, instability, and conflict. In these tumultuous times, we must stand up for rights and dignity for all, and for diversity and pluralism. We must speak out against anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim bigotry, and other forms of hate. An assault on one minority community is an attack for all, on all. I am also concerned that the political will that existed 15 years ago is under threat. The collective determination that enabled such a far-reaching agreement is being undermined by political expediency. The shared commitment to the universal values of the United Nations Charter is being tested. We must keep foremost in our minds the countless victims of racial discrimination. By implementing the Durban Agreement, we can uplift not only those who suffer most profoundly, but humanity as a whole. Non-discrimination and equality are the very foundation of our universal human rights system. Let us unite to ensure dignity, justice, and development for all. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Secretary General of the United Nations for his statement. In accordance with General Assembly Resolution 70 140, uh, I now invite Mr. Said Rad Al Hussein, United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, to make a statement. Mr. President, uh, Secretary General, uh, Excellencies, colleagues, and friends, uh, 15 years ago in Durban, the world came together to work to end uh, racism. Never before had leaders sought to construct a comprehensive global strategy to address the roots of all forms of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and intolerance. People of African and Asian descent migrants, Roma, indigenous peoples, and minorities, discrimination against people with HIV AIDS, and women who face multiple and overlapping forms of discrimination and exclusion, all these millions of victims were the focus of the Durban Conference. The Durban Declaration and Program of Action and the outcome document also addressed the profound injustice of religious intolerance, including Islamophobia or anti-Semitism, both of which are shockingly increasing in many countries. This, the 15th anniversary of the adoption of the Declaration, is an opportunity to consider how far we have come. But given the disgraceful persistence of discrimination across the globe, it must also be an occasion to renew our commitment to raising new generations free of prejudice and bigotry by taking further action. Unquestionably, there has been progress over the past 15 years. Many national action plans and anti-discrimination laws have been adopted or upgraded to comply with Durban recommendations. Those frameworks have assisted governments to push back discrimination at the national level and have enabled countless people to fight for equality. A dynamic network of civil society actors evolved in preparation for the World Conference, and today these organizations form a strong and impressive array of active voices. As the declaration states clearly, slavery and the transatlantic slave trade 
and I quote, are a crime against humanity and should always have been so, end quote. Their legacy of violence, fear, deprivation, and searing prejudice continues to be borne by people of African descent. Historically and in the present day, people of African descent are and have always been major contributors to development and the prosperity of their societies. But still today, they are frequently deprived of equal access to opportunities and services. I count the proclamation of the International Decade for People of African Descent and the adoption of its program of activities among the achievements of the post-Durban process. But there also uh, have been challenges. Most alarming among them is the resurgence of racial discrimination, discrimination and xenophobia in Europe and elsewhere. Migrants are becoming scapego scapegoats for deeper problems. Violence targets foreigners and others based on their real or perceived race, color, ethnic origin, or religion. The archaic injustice of prejudice still stalks through modern life, generating daily humiliations and oppressions for individuals, deepening divisions between communities and holding back millions of people from realizing their rights. Now, more than ever, states must focus their attention on fulfilling their obligation to protect the most vulnerable sectors in society. We must be vigilant to ensure that the stress of factors such as rising unemployment is not displaced into racist harassment, abuse, discrimination, and attacks. We must not condone the manipulation of such sentiments for political gain or their manifestation in official policies. Millions of people around the world continue to suffer the injustice and indignity of racial discrimination every day. It is urgent that states honor the, the commitments made at Durban and their obligations under international human rights law, particularly the International, uh, Coven uh, Com sorry, international Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, which has been ratified by 178 states. Human rights are universal and inalienable, indivisible, interdependent, and interrelated. They are universal because everyone is born with and possesses the same rights. They are inv indivisible and interdependent because all rights, political, civil, social, cultural, and economic, are equal in importance, and none can be fully enjoyed without the others. These rights apply to all of us equally, and when the human rights of one group are denied, that damages the dignity and equality of us all. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights for his statement. I should now like to consult members uh, with a view to inviting Mr. Ahmed Reid, member of the Working Group of Experts on the People of African Descent of uh, the Human Rights Council, to make a statement uh, at this meeting in accordance with paragraph 21 of Resolution 70-140, uh, if there is no objection, may I take it that it is the wish of the General Assembly and without setting a precedent to invite Mr. Ahmed Reid to make a statement. It is so decided and uh, in accordance with the decision just taken, I now invite Mr. Ahmed Reid uh, to uh, address the General Assembly. Your, Your Excellency, Distinguished President of the General Assembly, Secretary General, High Commissioner for Human Rights, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Friends, it is a great honor to be among you today. Let me express my gratitude to the President of the General Assembly, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, and my colleagues on the Working Group the United Nations Working Group of Experts on People of African Descent for the opportunity to present this year's keynote address under the theme, Challenges and Achievements of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action 15 Years After. Ever since the creation of the United Nations, 
the noble principle that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights has been the cornerstone on which the international human rights system is based. The rights of all human beings should be protected without distinction to race, ethnicity, nationality, religion, sex, language, or any other status. It was the strict adherence to this principle of equality and non-discrimination that led to worldwide revulsion and the condemnation over the racially motivated killings of 69 unharmed men and women in Sharpeville, South Africa on March 21, 1960, which led this United Nations in 1966 to commemorate March 21 as the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. So as we approach the 50th anniversary of its commemoration by the United Nations and the 15th anniversary of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action, let us reflect on the achievements to date and goals yet to be attained to make real our collective commitment to the principle of non-discrimination and our pledge to combat racial discrimination. In 2013, the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, in General Recommendation 35, stated, and I quote, the prevalence of racist hate speech in all regions of the world continue to represent a significant contemporary challenge for human rights, end quote. Today, we are confronted with the painful reality that racism, racial discrimination, Afrophobia, xenophobia, and related intolerance continue to pervade every corner of the global landscape. Over the past 20 years, there has been a steady rise of far-right populist sentiments worldwide and political parties with their brand of racism and xenophobia. The global financial crisis, and more recently, the movement of a large number of refugees have resulted in growing incidents of racial discrimination and xenophobia resulting in strong anti-immigration backlash and the scapegoating of migrants, racial prejudices and stereotypes, and violence. Racism and racial discrimination pervades all aspects of our lives, from segregated schools to gentrified neighborhoods where people of African descent and other, and other minorities are forced out of certain communities and into disadvantaged ones. I am a living example of racial profiling, feared and deemed suspicious because of the color of my skin. I have been called the N-word. I've been told to go back home. I've had my passport unduly scrutinized by airline personnel. I have been harassed and humiliated by customs and immigration officials on my travels. And I've been followed around in supermarkets and department stores. The odds are great that I will have these experiences again and again and again. The World Conference Against Racism, Racial Discrimination, and Xenophobia, and Related Intolerance was an important step in the fight to combat these manifestations of racism. The staging of the conference was an acknowledgment that racism and related forms of intolerance were global problems that required global solutions. The declaration which emerged from this conference outlined the source and contemporary consequences of racism, the victims of racism, and more importantly, strategies by way of a program of actions to, to achieve racial equality. The Durban Conference was a significant achievement in comprehensively outlining a strategy to, a strategy to address historical wrongs and injustices the strategy is embodied in the Declaration, which reasserted the principles of equality and non-discrimination as core human rights and assigns primary responsibility for combating racism and related intolerance to states, while also calling for, for the active involvement of international and non-governmental organizations, political parties, national human rights institutions, the private sector, the media, and civil society. As a mechanism to address discrimination, the Declaration called upon states to develop comprehensive national action plans, 
the administration of justice as well as by creating competent national bodies to actively to adequately investigate allegations of racism, xenophobia, and related intolerance. In examining the strategies put in place to achieve full and effective equality, a number of achievements attained through the imp implementation of the program of action are worthy of mention. For example, an increasing number of states have established equality bodies supported by appropriate legislation and policies to combat racial discrimination. However, the implementation of the law also requires states to fulfill their responsibility as duty bearers, as well as active involvement of civil society. Member states have been collecting desegregated data on people of African descent, which is important to enable governments to institute targeted programs to eliminate racial discrimination. Another achievement was the creation of new mechanisms to address racism and other related issues. One such mechanism is the United Nations Working Group of Experts of People of African Descent. The working group, of which I'm a member, was established in 2002 to study the impact of racial discrimination and the challenges faced by people of African descent living in the diaspora and to make recommendations for its elimination. Another achievement has been the adoption by the General Assembly of the program of activities for the implementation of the International Decade for People of African Descent. It recognizes that people of African descent represent a distinctive group whose human rights must be promoted and protected. The program of activities for the decade outlines several impact-oriented actions for states in three areas, recognition, justice, and development, to improve the overall human rights situation of people of African descent around the world. During the decade, stakeholders must use this opportunity and give high priority to programs and projects specifically tailored for combating racism and racial discrimination against people of African descent. Mr. President, while we can point to, to some progress since the, adaptation, the adoption of the Durban Declaration, the rate of implementation of commitments made at the conference to improve the lives of people of African descent, Asians and people of Asian descent, and indigenous peoples has not been equal across states, and many challenges persist that further impede implementation. As a working group monitoring the human rights situation of people of African descent and undertaking country-level fact-finding missions, it is of great concern to see that indicators in the fields of education, employment, health, housing, infant, child, and maternal mortality and life expectancy still show disadvantage and vast disparities when compared to the rest of the population. The colonial history, the legacy of enslavement, racial subordination and segregation, and racial inequality remain a serious challenge in many countries, as there has been no real commitment by states to reparations or to truth to truth and reconciliation for people of African descent. This is another challenge we face in attaining the objectives of the Durban Declaration. In its provisions for effective remedies, paragraph 158 notes, and I quote, the conference recognizes the need to develop programs for the social and economic development of these societies and the diaspora within the framework of a new partnership based on the spirit of solidarity and mutual respect, end quote. Some of the areas identified were debt relief, promotion of foreign direct investment, market access, technology transfer, and investment in health infrastructure, which to date have not been addressed in their entirety. There is a clear connection between poverty and racism. It is not a coincidence that countries that have had a history of trade in enslaved Africans 
their demographic structure is such that the poorest population group is disproportionately composed of racial or ethnic minorities. Faced with systemic discrimination and invisibility, people of African descent face an uphill battle in claiming their rights as right solars, thus perpetuating multi-generational poverty. As the development world embraces the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, which is grounded in international human rights standards and has the imperative of equality and non-discrimination at its core, it provides a framework with which countries can integrate human rights into national priorities. The United Nations system and member states bear a tremendous responsibility to ensure that future generations may live in a world free of the scourge of racial discrimination and its manifestation in the interest of peace and justice. The commitment made in the Durban Declaration will only be words if member states fail to adopt them and to take positive actions to create equal opportunities for victims of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. Their value depends wholly on our courage, will, and determination to honor them and give them meaning. Mr. President, as we aim to transform the world in which we live through sustainable and equitable development, let us commit to ensuring that no one is left behind. I thank you. I thank Mr. Raitt for his statement. And I now give the floor to the representative of the United Republic of Tanzania to speak on behalf of the African states. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Secretary General I have the honor to speak on behalf of the African group on the agenda item before us. At the 2001 World Conference Against Racism in Durban, the international community adopted the Durban Declaration and Program of Action, also called DDPA, meant to combat racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intoler intolerance. Today, we do not only commemorate DDPA, but we, re we reaffirm and renew our firm global political will to full and effective implementation of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action and the outcome of its review of 2009. The DDPA remains the most comprehensive, action-oriented global framework to combat racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. This commemoration provides a timely opportunity to assess the progress made in the implementation of the outcome of the conference after 15 years. It also offers opportunity to identify the obstacles and challenges encountered and, the find, and find appropriate solutions they require. The African group welcomes the progress made at the national, regional, and international levels in conformity with the obligations and commitments of Durban. We are encouraged by those governments that have adopted landmark and progressive legislation and administrative measures to effectively combat racism, racial discrimination, protection of the rights of migrants, refugees, asylum seekers, racial, national, or ethnic and ling linguistic minorities, and to combat incitement to hatred based on religion, belief, or color. We recognize that colonialism and apartheid and political injustice has led to many of these intolerances. We are also conscious that Africans and people of African descent and the Asian ethnicities continue to be victims of this scourge and their consequences. 
The persistence of these structures and practices have been among the factors contributing to lasting social and economic inequalities in many parts of the world today. The African group still con commence the General Assembly, the General Assembly's adoption of the decade for the people of African descent in 2015. Its theme, people of African descent, recognition, justice, and development, is to promote respect, protection, and the fulfillment of human rights and fundamental freedoms of peoples of African descent. We are of the view that governments should reinforce protection against all forms of intolerance by ensuring that all persons have access to effective and adequate remedies and enjoy the right to seek from competent national tribunals and other national institutions just and adequate reparations and satisfaction for any damages as a result of such discriminations. We have, and we are witnessing, discriminatory hardships the people of African descent continue to face across the globe. We commend the international partnerships in promoting measures designed to enhance the full enjoyment of economic, social, cultural, civil, and political rights in respect of their diverse heritage and culture. The diaspora being the sixth region of the African Union, the African Union will continue to seize opportunities that strengthen bridges across the diaspora. We appeal to the Secretary General to include in his report to the 71st session of the General Assembly progress regarding the revitalization of the trust fund established to ensure implementation of the activities of the International Decade for the People of Afghan Descent and the Program of Action. We appeal to the United Nations family and individuals to continue gen to contribute generously to the Trust Fund. We request the Secretary General to undertake appropriate contacts and initiatives to encourage such contributions. The African group recognizes the positive contrib contribution that the exercise of the right of freedom of expression of the media and other new information technologies, including the internet, can make to the fight against all forms of intolerances. We are, however, concerned about the misuse of information technologies as a, as a platform for promoting intolerance as well as perpetuating other forms of slavery, including child pornography and trafficking in persons. We have the view that internet providers should develop and abide by course of conduct to prevent trafficking and to, pro to protect victims of trafficking, strengthening measures to prevent traf trafficking of women and girls and provide for their healing and rehabilitation and address issues of international displacement. We urge the international community to support the implementation of the global action on trafficking of persons adopt, adopted by the General Assembly in 2010. We look forward to the holding of the high-level meeting of the General Assembly on trafficking of persons in October 2017. The Af African group believes that the right to quality education to all citizens contributes to more inclusive societies and promotes harmonious relations among nations and individuals and can, f and can foster mutual understanding as well as respect to cultural diversity and human rights for all. The group reiterates its belief in just that justice requires victims of human rights violations arising from racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance be assured of access to justice, effective and appropriate, appropriate protection and remedies. The group welcomes the decision of the General Assembly to erect the permanent me memorial in the premises of the United Nations to honor the victims of slavery 
and transatlantic slave, slave trade. We appreciate the support, the supportive activities intended to achieve this noble objective. Mr. President, in conclusion, the group condemns discrimination on any basis. We, are, we reaffirm our commitment to the full and effective implementation of the Durban Declaration. Collectively, we must accelerate our efforts to effectively implement the DDPA to sustain the momentum on gains achieved at the Durban, Durban Conference. It is imperative that another world conference against racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance be convened to build synergies on the assessed progress and new partnership, partnerships on the implementation of the DDPA targets and in indicators. It is time to act now. And if we truly want to achieve a meaningful positive change to curb, if we, if we truly want to achieve a meaningful positive change to curb the scourge. Mr. President, I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the United Republic of Tanzania. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Indonesia, who will speak on behalf of the Asia Pacific states. Mr. President, it is indeed an honor for me to speak on behalf of the member states of the Asia-Pacific Group in this important event. We wish to begin by thanking you, Mr. President, for convening this plenary meeting to commemorate the, inter the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination as proclaimed by the General Assembly in its Resolution No. 2142 of 26 October 1966. We would like also to thank Mr. Ahmad Red for his statement earlier and commend the work of the United Nations Working Group of Experts on People of African Descent, which has contributed to the global fight against racial discrimination. Mr. President, the theme for this year's event focuses on the state of racial discrimination worldwide, especially after almost 15 years of the adoption of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action. In September 2001, at the historic World Conference Against Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia, and Related Intolerance, we gathered in South Africa to make the call to the people of the world that the global fight against racial prejudices should be done with the greatest determination and perseverance. The message from the World Conference was, was undeniably clear that the struggle against racism is a struggle for human rights, dignity, and eradication of poverty. One and a half decades later, we must now ask ourselves whether our joint efforts to address the situation of victims of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance identified in the Durban Declaration and Program of Action have been truly making significant progress. Mr. President, racism persists despite the efforts of many groups and many nations. This annual commemoration therefore shows that the international community should maintain the determination and perseverance needed in the struggle to eliminate racial discrimination. This event gives us the opportunity to look at our achievements and emerging challenges, and it is clear that much remains to be done. This event reminds us of the historic tragedies of colonialism, slavery and war, and the valuable lessons that we painfully learned. It also serves an, as an alert that in today's world, racial discrimination can still become a cause of social unrest and violence. Nowadays, we continue to find various forms and racial of racial discrimination through social practices and discriminatory laws and regulations that lead to poverty, underdevelopment, marginalization, and socioeconomic exclusion that affects the lives and livelihood 
of a number of communities throughout the world. Mr. President, it is therefore essential to reaffirm the political will to strengthen our concerted efforts in the elimination of racial discrimination. During this AUKUS observation, let us be reminded that we need to translate this political will into concrete and more vigorous actions at the national, regional, and international levels to effectively implement the Durban Declaration and Program of Action. The involvement of all stakeholders, particularly the civil society, the private sector, and the media is also unquestionably imperative in this fight. The effective promotion of a culture of peace and tolerance to tackle racial discrimination does not and cannot rest solely on the shoulder of governments. Mr. President, finally, on behalf of the Asia-Pacific Group, allow me to once again proclaim and reaffirm our commitment and strong determination to ensure the fight against all forms and manifestation of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance remain a high priority in our respective countries and throughout the world. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Indonesia. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Azerbaijan, who will speak on behalf of the Eastern European states. Mr. President, I have the honor to speak on behalf of the group of Eastern European states. The group of Eastern European states welcomes the meeting of the General Assembly in commemoration of the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, <coughs> which is being held under the theme, Challenges and Achievements of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action 15 years after. Today's meeting is an opportunity to renew our collective commitment to the total elimination of the racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance, and to the implementation of the International Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. On this occasion, we pay tribute to the victims of racism, as well as to leaders and ordinary people around the world who have fought for human equality. Over the past 15 years, efforts have been undertaken and some progress has been achieved. Yet, today it is clear that the ideals behind the call for societies free from racism and discrimination are still to be attained. As the most recent report of the Secretary General, document A-70-367 shows that this phenomenon has not been eradicated and no country can claim, claim to be free from them. The group of Eastern European states remain concerned about the persistence of the scourge of racism and discrimination. This is a global challenge and we must be united to fight it. The International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination remains the basis for all efforts to prevent, combat, and eradicate racism, and each state has the primary responsibility for the fight against this scourge. In this respect, we would like to reiterate the fundamental importance of ratifying and fully implementing the Convention, which should be a priority for all countries, and express our wish for its early universal ratification. It is also important to further support efforts designed to promote intercultural dialogue, tolerance, and respect for diversity. Education is a determining factor in the promotion and protection of values of justice and equity, which are essential to prevent and combat the spread of intolerance. Continued cooperation between the United Nations and other relevant international and regional organizations to develop educational programs aimed at countering all forms of discrimination in order to ensure respect for the dignity of all human beings and to enhance mutual understanding among all cultures and civilizations is of critical importance. 
the Eastern European states remain committed to the fight against racism and racial discrimination and will continue to make its contribution to this noble cause. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Azerbaijan. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Antigua and Barbuda, who will speak on behalf of Latin American and Caribbean states. Thank you. Mr. President, I have the honor to speak on behalf of the group of Latin America and Caribbean states, GULAC, on this occasion of the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. <clears throat> the countries of GULAC recognize both the challenges and opportunities presented by an increasingly globalized world in, relate, in relation to the struggles to eradicate racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. It is for this reason, Mr. President, the member states of GULAC <coughs> re reiterate our unwavering commitment to the Durban Declaration of Action and this program of action. This year's theme, Challenges and Achievements of the Durban Declaration and, and Program of Action, and 15 years after the adoption of the Declaration, provides an opportunity for the international community and member states to review policies both within our, our relative or our related countries and internationally with a view in mind for, to look at and close gaps that are persistent in racial and the racial barriers that confront these. A decade and a half after the adoption of the declaration, we have seen some measurable progress, both by international com communities and in addressing racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. However, Mr. President, decisive elements of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance are reoccurring in today's world in various forms, often associated with the consequences of challenging gains made in social, economic conditions, limiting limited opportunities, unemployment, and poverty. The key elements in the fight against intolerance remains an inclusive society where all are given equal opportunities. The principles of human rights are taught and upheld, and a greater awareness of and remembrance of past mistakes and atrocities are known. Mr. President, it would be remiss of my delegation if I do not mention one of the most significant achievements of the Durban Declaration and its program of action in its assertion that slavery and slave trade are crimes against humanity. Gulag countries are pleased with the decision taken by the General Assembly to erect, to erect the permanent memorial at the United Nations to honor the victims of slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. We encourage members, member states, NGOs, private, the private sector, and individuals to support this and other initiatives which will serve 
to strengthen the message of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action. Mr. President, the member states in our region are unique and diverse as the world has ever seen. We are multi-ethnic, multicultural, multilingual in our, in our population and the makeup of our people. With our exceptional diversity comes greater opportunities and our, for our people. We recognize that encouraging the full participation and the contribution of all our people is a significant route to, to fulfilling our own development goals. In this respect, countries of our region firmly believe that sustainable development cannot be achieved except where it is achieved for all people, regardless of racial distinction. As our leaders gathered here last year and adopted the 2030 Agenda, the member states of GRULAC reaffirmed our determination to promote the full, in, the full inclusion of all races in our societies and to, to achieving regional world, a, region, a, a region and a world free of racial discrimination. We recognize no region or no country is immune to prejudices. It is for this reason why the Grulac, the Grulac region, in, 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 in celebrating inter, International Day of, of the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, sees this important. The International Decade for People of African Descent, 2015 to 2024, and the, the International Decade for Latin America and Caribbean People of African Descent are two important decades for celebration by our region. Both decades provide the basis to take concrete measures to, ad to ad address the ex expansive effects of racism and the effects of transformation for our people of African descent. The coronation of these decades is our seal in ensuring, the, ensuring that these, would, these atrocities would never happen again. The passage of the landmark convention on the elimination of racial discrimination is one such ceiling. In order to continue moving forward, we as member states must move beyond eloquent speeches and continue to define concrete areas in eliminating the scourge of discrimination and its adherence to achieving um, political, economic, political, economic, and social inclusion. Mr. President, in closing this statement, I must remind us of the need for member states to continue to heighten awareness of the, of the harmful effects of racism and, the, and, the commit, and our commitment of, of leadership in promoting racial justice, understanding, respect, equality, and diversity. I thank you. I thank the distinguished permanent representative of Antigua and Barbuda. I now give the floor to the distinguished permanent representative of Luxembourg, who will speak on behalf of Western European and other states.
Monsieur le Président, j'ai l'honneur de m'exprimer au nom du groupe des États d'Europe occidentale et autres États à l'occasion de la Journée internationale pour l'élimination de la discrimination raciale. Il y a 50 ans précisément, un an après l'adoption du premier traité international sur les droits de l'homme, la Convention internationale sur l'élimination de toutes les formes de discrimination raciale, l'Assemblée générale a procédé à la proclamation de cette journée importante. Mais alors même que les nations adoptèrent ce document fondamental, Nelson Mandela croupissait dans les joules de l'Afrique du Sud. Preuve, s'il en faut, que nos avancées sur le plan normatif devancent parfois la réalité. Nous aurions tort aussi de croire qu'avec la disparition d'un régime ségrégationniste comme l'apartheid, nous nous soyons débarrassés du racisme une fois pour toutes. La Journée internationale pour l'élimination de la discrimination raciale nous permet justement de réaffirmer régulièrement notre engagement en faveur d'un monde juste, basé sur la conviction que tous les êtres humains sont égaux en dignité et en droit et de rester vigilant face aux résurgences de la discrimination raciale qui peut prendre de nombreux visages. Nous saluons la mémoire de toutes les victimes du racisme, de la discrimination raciale, de la xénophobie et de l'intolérance qui, qui y est associée. Monsieur le Président, la Convention internationale sur l'élimination de toutes les formes de discrimination raciale garde toute sa pertinence. Sa ratification quasi universelle lui confère une indéniable autorité en la matière. Les experts indépendants du Comité pour l'élimination de la discrimination raciale contribuent à son respect en assurant le suivi de sa mise en œuvre et en assistant les États dans l'élaboration de politiques visant à lutter contre le racisme et la discrimination. En même temps, nous reconnaissons d'autres initiatives destinées à combattre le racisme sous toutes ses formes, comme la Déclaration et le Programme d'action de Durban de 2001. Nous reconnaissons l'importance de la prévention et de l'action concertée, notamment dans le domaine de l'éducation, et nous reconnaissons que l'accent mis sur les mesures pratiques et concrètes peut contribuer à l'élimination du racisme, de la discrimination raciale, de la xénophobie et de l'intolérance qui y est associée. Monsieur le Président, 50 ans après l'adoption de la Convention internationale sur l'élimination de toutes les formes de discrimination raciale et 15 ans après la déclaration et du programme d'action de Durban, il est indéniable que des progrès ont été réalisés. Mais il, était, mais il est indéniable également que de nombreux obstacles doivent encore être surmontés. En cette journée internationale pour l'élimination de la discrimination raciale, sachons tirer les leçons de l'histoire et des erreurs commises et ne commettons pas celle de croire que l'histoire ne peut pas se répéter. Restons tous vigilants. Je vous remercie de votre attention. I thank the distinguished permanent representative of Luxembourg. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Kazakhstan. Mr. Chairman, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset I would like to thank the President of the 70th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, His Excellency Mr. Morgan Luketov, for convening this commemorative meeting to mark the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, as well as the 15th anniversary of the adoption of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action. Let me also thank the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Mr. Ban Ki-moon, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, His Excellency Mr. Zaid Rad Al-Hussein, 
and keynote speaker, Mr. Ahmed Raid, for the insightful statements. We also express our appreciation to the United Nations Working Group on People of African Descent for its untiring and immense efforts to overcome racial discrimination. Mr. Chairman, Durban Declaration and Program of Action as a cornerstone stone of global human rights architecture is highly demanded and applicable for addressing contemporary challenges. In the ambience of the protracted armed conflicts and the following refugee crisis, it is a vital issue to prioritize a struggle against racial discrimination and xenophobia. A human rights-based approach is to mitigate negative crisis-related hardships through integration of refugees rather than heightening tensions in society through segregation and discrimination. In view of the global war against terrorism, a scourge spilling over continents and state borders, our delegation considers critical to act in accordance with the Durban Declaration and the Plan of Action. Law enforcement and providing security should go along with respect and protection of human rights. Racist attitudes and hate speech have also deployed social media and internet platforms. Our delegation deems crucial to appeal to civil and business society in the quest to exclude internet from being a vehicle for spreading hostile and volatile attitudes on basis of nationality, religion, ethnicity, or race. The only way to surmount discrimination and related intolerance is to combine efforts of international and national institutions, social society, and businesses. International community has tools and experience to tackle discrimination and intolerance, and we call for a strong political will and financial support to bridge a gap between normative documents and their practical implementation. Mr. Chairman, since independence, Kazakhstan has declared to the whole world our policy of peace, trust, and cooperation based on inter-ethnic and interreligious peace and harmony. As President Nur Sultan Nazarbayev said, for us, the principle of tolerance is not only a norm of political culture, but rather one of the key principles of the statehood, which we decisively support and strengthen. Ethnic religious, cultural, and linguistic diversity is our precious wealth. We have managed to turn the historically inherited polyconfessional society into our strategic advantage. As a state party to the convention, my country is deeply committed to combat racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. Kazakhstan is among the 57 states which have signed the optional declaration recognizing the competence of the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination to consider complaints from individuals or groups who claim their rights have been violated. We uphold our commitments under the Convention through a robust framework of laws and programs enforced at the national and local levels. Constitution of Kazakhstan enshrines the principles of equality and expressly prohibits discrimination of any form. The various ethnic groups are engaged in nation building along with ethnic Kazakhs and enjoy the highest civil and social status, not as national minorities, but as citizens with full civil and political rights. Kazakhstan has established an effective system that ensures interaction and equal partnership between the state and civil society the main mechanism of which is the Assembly of People of Kazakhstan, a unique constitutional authority on issues of inter-ethnic and cultural harmony. The country has a doctrine of national unity to strengthen inter-ethnic mutual respect. The Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religion has made an important contribution to the consolidation of inter-ethnic and inter-religious accord in Kazakhstan. This forum has received international recognition as an effective dialogue platform for the promotion of peace and harmony on the planet. Kazakhstan's model of inter-ethnic and inter-religious tolerance has been highly commended by the United Nations and regional organizations 
such as OOC, SICA, CIS, and others. Mr. Chairman, Kazakhstan believes that the United Nations must continue to address the issues of race, racism, xenophobia, and related intolerance, and thus uphold human dignity for all. Kazakhstan, reaffirming its commitment to the Durban Declaration and the Program of Action, intends to continue to make every effort for the benefit of dialogue among civilizations and always stands ready to combat racism and related intolerance at all levels and throughout the world, as well as to honor and preserve the memory of millions of lives taken tragically. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the distinguished representative of Kazakhstan, and I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of South Africa. Your Excellency, the PGA, Your Excellency, the SG of the UN, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, Excellencies, distinguished delegations, Mr. President, South Africa welcomes the convening of this commemorative event to mark the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. 2016 marks 15 years after South Africa hosted the landmark and historic World Conference Against Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia and Related Intolerances, the WACA, and the adoption of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action, the DDPA, which remains the only instructive outcome document of a major conference prescribing measures and remedies for the elimination of all the scourges of racism as well as the atonement of historic injustices. In the period following the WACA, many achievements have been registered, particularly in Geneva, in the creation of the Durban follow-up mechanisms, which ensured that the anti-racism agenda is profiled and visible in the UN and human rights system. In addition to these mechanisms, the following key achievements need to be highlighted. First, the significant proclamation and subsequent launch of the International Decade for People of African Descent in the Diaspora for 2015 to 2024. It will be recalled that the DDPA categorized Africans and people of African descent as a grouping that suffered the most in terms of historical injustices emanating primarily from the, the legacies of slavery, the slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade and colonialism, and the momentous occasion in UN history where it was recognized as a crime against humanity, which in itself is another major achievement. Secondly, the commendable work undertaken by the follow-up mechanisms to DDPA, namely the working group of experts on people of African, African descent in developing the comprehensive program of action for the decade of people of African descent and their collaborative effort, together with the Intergovernmental Working Group on the effective implementation of the DDPA on the development of the program of activities for the implementation of the decade. And thirdly, the unveiling of the monument of the Ark of Remembrance in memory of the victims of the transatlantic slave trade and to honor their contribution or the contribution they made. Also, the inclusion of the Waka of 2001 in the 20 major achievements of the Office of the High Commissioner since the adoption of the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action are further significant steps taken by the UN in its efforts towards the acknowledgement of the terrible suffering faced by the victims. Mr. President, regret regrettably, 15 years on, there remains a lot that still requires to be addressed to restore the human dignity and equality to the millions of victims who suffered and continue to suffer the terrible scourges of racism, racial discrimination, 
xenophobia and related intolerance, which continue to haunt the world today. Despite efforts, we have not yet attained a number of key objectives which require the utmost attention of the international community. There remains an imperative need to end contemporary forms of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance, which was the rationale behind convening the WCAR in 2001. This should be done by filling the gaps that exist within international human rights law through the creation of new normative standards, namely the elaboration of complementary standards to the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, the ICERD, which addresses xenophobia, Islamophobia, antisemitism, and incitement to hatred. The perennial lack of progress in this area has continued to negatively affect our fight in combating racism and racial discrimination. The establishment of a racial equality index on the situation of people of African descent in terms of the socioeconomic development is still to be realized, which will serve as an important tool for identifying the key causes and manifestations of racial discrimination. Mr. President, it is regrettable that there remains many member states who have reservations regarding key articles of the ICERD namely Article 4. My delegation wishes to put it on record that these reservations continue to, neg to negate the essence of the instrument and defeats its core objectives and purposes. Furthermore, South Africa looks forward to the establishment of the Permanent Forum on People of African Descent and to positive steps taken towards the reopening and revitalizing of the Trust Fund for the program for the decade for action to combat racism and racial discrimination. We believe this will provide for the successful implementation of the activities of the International Decade for People of African Descent, the Forum, and beyond. In closing, Mr. President, this commemorative event and the 15th year anniversary of the WCAR and the DDPA presents an opportune moment for the world to unite and strengthen our efforts towards combating and eradicating all forms and contemporary manifestations of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerances, which has for far too long affected the victims. As we remember the Sharpeville massacre on 69 unarmed people on March 21st, 1960, in South Africa, we call on nations of the world to use the opportunity of this International Day to restore human dignity. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of South Africa. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Netherlands. Mr. President, the Kingdom of the Netherlands aligns itself with a statement made on behalf of the Western European and others group. Today, we mark the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. We commemorate all lives worldwide of people who fought against racial discrimination because of the desire for democracy and equal human rights. The Durban Declaration and program of action provide us with a series of tools to tackle the scourge of racism. We must all work to give practical effect at national, regional, and international levels to the commitments we undertook at Durban in 2001. Let me reiterate in this regard the strong commitment of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in the fight against racism racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. Everyone living and residing in the Kingdom of the Netherlands is protected by law from discrimination. The ban on discrimination is enshrined in our Constitution. The Netherlands recognizes 
that a vigorous approach to preventing and combating all forms and manifestations of intolerance and racism is needed. This includes not only effective legal responses, but also preventive measures that promote social inclusion, acceptance and equality for all members of society. The Dutch government works hard to combat discrimination in collaboration with the business community, civil society organizations and individuals, as discrimination is a shared concern and imposes a shared responsibility. Last year, the Netherlands government has adopted a national guidance note for the implementation of the International Decade for People of African Descent. Dutch activities during the decade will serve to step up measures to tackle racism in the Netherlands in line with the new National Interministerial Action Plan Against Discrimination that is currently being developed. Mr. President, racial discrimination is unacceptable. We have to strive for nothing less than full elimination. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Netherlands. I now give the floor to the distinguished permanent representative of Bangladesh. Mr. President, Excellencies, we align ourselves with the statement made by Indonesia on behalf of the Asia-Pacific Group. On the occasion of the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, I join the international community in reaffirming our firm commitment to combat all forms of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerances. Bangladesh would like to reiterate its principled and uncompromising stand against racial discrimination, which is aptly manifested in our constitution as well as in our entire legal and administrative framework. Our constitution prohibits discrimination against any citizen on grounds of race, religion, caste, or creed, gender, or place of birth. We promote international cooperation amongst and between nations, irrespective of race, religion, ethnicity, culture, and civilization. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and her government maintains a zero tolerance policy to all forms of terrorism, violent extremism, and radicalization. Our flagship General Assembly resolution in the UN on culture of peace, which receives overwhelming support from the Committee of Nations every year, is a testimony of our commitment towards the principle of inclusion and peaceful coexistence of diverse groups. We believe in unity in diversity. Our adherence to the culture of pluralism communal harmony, democracy, freedom, liberalism, peace and development is well acclaimed by the international community. This year, the International Day is devoted to challenges and achievements of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action. As we observe the auspicious day for the elimination of racial discrimination, 15 years after the adoption of the landmark document, we notice People around the world are facing discrimination, suppression, and oppression on the grounds of their racial, religious, or ethnic identity. We are dismayed that hundreds of millions of human beings, including migrants and refugees, continue to suffer today from racism, discrimination, xenophobia, and exclusion. There is a clear need for putting into practice what was agreed to in Durban. We call for stronger, international cooperation for elimination of racial discrimination from the world. We reiterate the importance of ratifying and fully implementing the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, which is the universal foundation for efforts to prevent, combat, and eradicate racism. As a state party to the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, and an active member of the UN Human Rights Council, we support comprehensive implementation of the provisions of the Convention. We all must also show strong political resolve and make further efforts 
to implement the recommendations of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action for Elimination of Racial Discrimination. The new Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development also recognizes the need to build peaceful, just, and inclusive societies that are based on respect for human rights for all. We must redouble our efforts to resolve all disputes generating intolerance, discrimination, and hatred. I hope the day is not far when our collective efforts will succeed to create a society based on tolerance, inclusion, justice, equality, equity, and human rights. I thank you. I thank the distinguished permanent representative of Bangladesh. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Kyrgyzstan. Господин председатель, расовое, этническое, религиозное и культурное разнообразие делает наш мир более многогранным. Кыргызстан выступает за консолидацию усилий международного сообщества в борьбе с негативными явлениями расовой дискриминации, ксенофобии и связанной с ними нетерпимости. В этой связи особую обеспокоенность вызывает рост числа актов насилия по расовым мотивам и все более частым агрессивным заявлением в общественной сфере – вызваны в немалой степени массовыми миграционными процессами, происходящими в последний год в связи с событиями на Ближнем Востоке и Африке. Расизм, дискриминация и нетерпимость являются глобальной проблемой, которая должна беспокоить всех. Сегодня эти нарушения относятся к числу важнейших проблем в области прав человека. Мы также должны признать, что всеобщие нормы и стандарты по правам человека – и, несомненно, Дурбанская декларация и программа действий являются оптимальными руководящими принципами для защиты уязвимых групп людей от расизма и нетерпимости. Ценность международных обязательств измеряется их осуществлением на национальном уровне. Господин председатель, в соответствии с Конституцией в Кыргызстане никто не может подвергаться дискриминации по признаку этнической, религиозной или иной принадлежности. В стране приняты программы, национальные программы по политическому участию, социальному интегрированию этнических меньшинств и культурному и языковому многообразию. Кроме того, Кыргызстан выступает за необходимость повышения ответственности государственных структур за предотвращение конфликтов. В этой связи при правительстве Кыргызстана создано государственное агентство по делам местного самоуправления и межэтническим отношениям. В структуре агентства лидирующее место занимает мониторинговый центр по анализу и раннему предупреждению конфликтов. В местах компактного проживания различных этнических групп учреждены общественные приемные по вопросам межэтнических отношений. При областных администрациях созданы совещательные комитеты, в составы которых входят местные лидеры разных этнических групп, а также активисты и религиозные деятели. Кыргызстан, как действующий член Совета по правам человека, призывает все государства-члены, несмотря на возможные негативные отношения части своего общества к беженцам и мигрантам, исполнять взятые на себя международные обязательства в этой сфере и предпринимать все возможные действия, чтобы изменить сознание людей и привить им понимание того, что мир разнообразен и каждый человек в нем уникален. Спасибо за внимание. I thank the distinguished representative of Kyrgyzstan. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. Господин председатель, мы поддерживаем то внимание, которое уделяется в Организации Объединенных Наций вопросам борьбы с расизмом и расовой дискриминацией. К сожалению, и сегодня этническая и религиозная нетерпимость, ксенофобия и межэтническая напряженность не преодолены. Их заложниками становятся национальные меньшинства, представители которых наиболее часто сталкиваются с различными формами дискриминации. Ориентиром для государств при разработке программ в области противодействия этим явлениям остаются Дурманская декларация и программа действий. Сегодняшнее заседание является хорошей возможностью для международного сообщества 
подтвердить принципиальное неприятие любых проявлений расизма и нетерпимости. Решения Дурбана дались непросто, но они вселили во многих надежду, что расизм может быть преодолен. Господин председатель, Российская Федерация последовательно выступает за поощрение и защиту прав человека без каких бы то ни было различий по признаку расы, национальности или этнической принадлежности, религии и языка. В нашей стране проживают представители более 180 этнических групп, что придает особое значение задаче развития межэтнического диалога. Важной составляющей этого процесса является кропотливая работа на национальном уровне по созданию и воспитанию толерантного общества, основанного на принципах равенства и культурного многообразия. Одним из наших приоритетов в области противодействия расизму, включая его современные формы, является сохранение памяти о пережитых страданиях и потерях в ходе Второй мировой войны, ставших следствием преступной идеологии нацизма, а также реализации соответствующих образовательных программ. Празднование в прошлом году 70-летия победы во Второй мировой войне еще раз напомнило международному сообществу о тех неисчислимых бедах, которые принесли человечеству идеи расового превосходства. Вновь высветило значение Нюрнбергского трибунала, оказавшего ключевое влияние на становление международного режима прав человека. К сожалению, случаи откровенного попустительства в отношении последователей нацизма не прекращаются и сегодня. Необходимо поставить надежный барьер на пути распространения идей нетерпимости, расового, национального или религиозного превосходства. Равноправное международное сотрудничество, взаимное уважение, сохранение культурного многообразия, открытый и конструктивный диалог – вот рецепт искоренения и предупреждения расизма и расовой дискриминации. Руководствуясь этими целями, наша делегация при растущем межрегиональном соавторстве ежегодно инициирует одобрение Генеральной Ассамблеи резолюции «Борьба против героизации нацизма и других видов практики, которые способствуют эскалации современных форм расизма, расовой дискриминации, ксенофобии и связанной с ними нетерпимости». Мы убеждены, что ее принятие вносит реальный вклад в дело искоренения этих достойных, к сожалению, проявлений и надеемся на широкую поддержку этой инициативы в ходе предстоящей 71-й сессии Генеральной Ассамблеи. Господин председатель, для искоренения расизма и ксенофобии необходима политическая воля и последовательная работа всего международного сообщества. Мы призываем к объединению усилий для достижения этой не теряющей своей актуальности цели. Я благодарю вас. I thank the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. Distinguished delegates, we have heard the last speaker in this commemorative meeting. May I take it that it is the wish of the General Assembly to conclude its consideration of agenda item 70. It is so decided. The meeting is adjourned.